Hello and welcome to today's market update video. My name is Jason Wink and thank you for checking this out. It's been a, a little while since I've done an update video. I think largely because for such a long time it seems the market was just humming along. Uh, there wasn't a whole lot to update folks on. So that's all changed in the last two days. Uh, so today <clears throat> what we're looking at is a chart I commonly review on my blog. Uh, this is an S&P 500 daily chart. So what you're looking at here is the past 12 months. Each bar on this chart represents a day, a trading day that is. Uh, the red bars are the days the market goes down. Uh, the white colored bars are the days the market goes up. And when you look at those bars, what that means, by the way, is uh, the <clears throat> uh, top of a bar is the highest point in the day and the uh, bottom of a bar is the lowest point. Um, so it would be the open and the close. And then the kind of the skinny lines that you see that shoot through a bar, that's the intraday high and low. So when we look at this, there's a couple things I think um, people should know, because I know there might be some people panicking because the markets just dropped uh, 300 points in the Dow yesterday, and markets are down another almost percent so far today. Uh, today is August 1st, by the way. It's about 1 o'clock p.m., so about three hours before market close and the end of the week and the kickoff to the month of August. The uh, month of July was the first negative month in the stock market for a few months. It's been overwhelmingly strong. And when you look at this chart and kind of you know, try to zoom out a little bit and look where it started in that bottom left-hand corner, we have to keep in mind that the S&P 500 is still up from 1,700 to 1,920. So it's up 200 points over the last uh, 12 months, which is about a 12, 13% gain. So in spite of dropping around 4% or so from its peak, uh, the market is still in an uptrend. But that could be changing. So what we're looking at today, you'll see on here, I've drawn in a few different lines. The two solid red bars that kind of move perpendicular to each other, uh, those would be the trading range that we've been in for the past year. So whenever the market seems to get to the, the top of that line, it has a hard time breaking through, but every time it's hit the bottom, <clears throat> it served as some support. The market sort of bounced off from that. The dashed line in the middle is just the mid-range, and you see that you know, for the most part, um, the last especially few months, from February till now, the market's been mostly trading around that mid-range point. So two days ago, uh, the market broke through that uh, midway point, and every time it's done that over the past year, it does tend to fall uh, and then try to get back above it. So we'll see. You know, the interesting thing is now is not a time to panic. It is obviously always frustrating when you see a portfolio hit a new all-time high like it did a couple weeks ago. And then you have a couple bad weeks in a row. Um, it seems like the sky is falling and it'll never stop and every, all the gains will be wiped out. And, you know, that's probably what the media wants you to think. So you'll tune in and you know, watch more TV and so they can sell more ads and all that kind of stuff. But the reality is this would be in this current 12-month trading range. If you look back, it hit the bottom end of it once, twice, three times, four times. Now this would be the fifth time. Now if it doesn't uh, hold here, so if it uh, isn't able to hold and maintain this uptrend, then I do think what you'll find is at least a few percent more sell-off and potentially quite a bit more. Um, you could see the S&P try to test its lowest point for the year. Uh, the lowest point for the year <clears throat> happened back in February where the S&P was down at 1740. And at that point, it had just taken a similar dive to what it had done here recently, but actually quite a bit more. So it dropped almost 6% from peak to trough. Today, it's only from peak to trough dropped about 4%. So the things that we need to keep in mind, um, one is the next week or so is actually pretty important. Um, if the market can't hold this trading range it's been in for the past year, it's going to set a new direction. Um, that new direction could be up, and again, just a whole different range. Um, this is, you know, the, the red bars here is actually secondary. You can barely see on the left side of my screen, there's a little blue line. That was a trading range that we were in in 2013, which was a little bit stronger than the one that had been happening in 2014. Uh, but still, both of them were uptrends. It just, there's a correction and then a new uptrend emerged. So what we're seeing right now is the possibility of the first correction, real meaningful one anyway, in quite a while. If that happens, uh, the market will either establish a new uptrend or it'll form its first downtrend in quite a few years. 
Um, in any event, what we're doing to keep an eye on this, so our portfolios, as many of you know, are pretty tactical in nature. So we're not going to try to trade every single day and catch every single one of these red bars so we don't have losses. We want to still make sure that we're keeping ourselves committed so we can enjoy the longer term uptrends. However, if the market does turn into a true downtrend, uh, we will get defensive. Uh, there were a couple defensive changes that we made towards the end of July. Um, some of our high yield bond positions were eliminated before all this crash. That's been helpful. And our stock portfolios, they're about 20% actually uninvested, meaning they're had moved over to fixed income. So that'll help buffer this a little bit, but we will be still mostly invested. However, if things continue to deteriorate, you'll start to see our portfolios change quite a bit. For those who aren't clients, you know, those want to keep an eye on my blog for updates uh, because some of the things that we'll be watching, for example, this is a long-term S&P 500 chart. This one that every bar represents a month. So it helps us identify the bigger picture trends. You can see here, our signals were that we were in a bull market, the most recent one starting in 20, uh, December of 2011. So all of 2012, all of 2013, and so far 2014. Um, but we might see one of these red bars come in here. The market's been overbought. That's these green peaks we see in the top of this chart. It tells us the market went up too much too fast. When that tends to dip below and not become a green line anymore, you can see that's happened a couple times in the past 15 years. One before the tech bubble burst and that sort of uh, first uh, market crash of the uh, 21st century happened. The second happened right around the financial crisis. So if it happens again, I mean, these are these are pretty clear warning signs to us, and we'll definitely want to take some defensive action. But you don't want to just overreact every time there's a 3% or 4% correction. Those are actually pretty natural and normal, and this is certainly not the first time. Even in this last two-and-a-half-year uptrend, there's been multiple times you'll see these red bars in here, most of which are more severe than the one we're, the one we're in now, and each time the market's recovered. So if we can stay committed to a mechanical system, it'll help us be committed at the right times and make sure that we don't get sort of fooled and panic whenever we see a little red dot on these charts. Uh, but if it does turn into something more, our systems will certainly throw in one of these red bars, which tells us it is a actual proper time to get defensive. So stay tuned. I'll make sure I keep everybody up to date. In the interim, I hope everyone's enjoying a great summer. If you have any questions, um, feel free to use the comment function. If you want to share this, there's some social share icons for places like Facebook. Maybe other people would benefit you know, from the emotional stability of having solid mechanical systems like I show here on these video blogs. Take care and I'll be in touch real soon.